I'm Eloy Ortiz Oakley, and welcome back to The Rant, the podcast where we get behind the curtain and break down the people, the policies, and the politics of our higher education system. In this episode, we continue to dig into the College Board, standardized testing, and college admissions. Today, I'm joined by my good friend and colleague, Michelle Siqueiros. Michelle is the president of a Campaign for College Opportunity, an organization focused on increasing college graduates to strengthen California. Michelle, welcome to the ring. Thanks. Great to be here. All right. Good to see you again. Thanks, as always, for all the work that you do. So you have been leading the Campaign for College Opportunity for a number of years now. I won't say how many years. And along the way, you've been advocating for greater access to higher education for Californians, particularly Californians of diverse backgrounds, low-income Californians. Tell us about the campaign for our listeners who haven't followed the campaign. Well, it's definitely a privilege, one, to be here with you, Eloy, and to have been doing this work together for so many years. You know, as a first-generation college student, someone who grew up here in Los Angeles, very low income, going to college pretty much transformed my life. I would not have the opportunities to be the professional that I am had I not had the chance to go to college. And I would not have had the chance to go to college had it not been for financial aid, including Cal Grant, Pell Grant, subsidized student loans, and affirmative action in the 90s, which made my dream of going to college possible. I've always felt very blessed. You know, I come from a a really beautiful, strong family, but my mother only had a sixth grade education and really always supported. Every time I wanted to go to the library, check out a book. (laughs) Anytime that I got an A, she would give me $20. And one time my staff and I calculated that and realized that making Close to minimum wage salary, 20 bucks was a lot for her right. at that time. But just to say, like, that's how much she valued my education and just felt very fortunate to have gone to college. And the Campaign for College Opportunity has been focused for the past 18 years on expanding college opportunity for students, making sure not just that they have the chance in California to go to college. But that when they do, Eloy, we both know that going to college is just the first step, right? You need to graduate, Mm -hmm. earn a degree, transfer. And so this work comes from a very personal passion and connection. We live in a really diverse state, and yet we still see huge inequality in the college preparation and going and success rates for Black and Latinx and Indigenous and Pacific Islander students. So we're focused on reversing that influencing state budget policy, our state college leaders, and making sure that when they think about how to pass state laws or practices at their campuses, that they're student-centered. Well, that's a great mission. And I know all of us in California really appreciate the work that the campaign has done to, to unlock the potential that you just talked about, because that potential exists in virtually every neighborhood up and down this great state. So exactly. uh, let's talk about the College Board. I don't need to give you an introduction to to the College Board and the work that they do. You're very familiar with this organization as well as with ACT, although ACT gets behind the scenes a little bit more than the College Board. They love to be out front. And they've been in the news quite a bit lately, whether it is the the challenges they faced with uh, advanced placement African-American studies in Florida to the controversies over the use of the SAT in college admissions and the number of institutions, colleges and universities that are going either test optional or test blind. That's certainly the case, many of our institutions here in California. So you and your team have been very vocal about ending the use of high stakes standardized testing, like the use of the SAT and the ACT in college admissions here in California. Tell us why your organization has been so vocal about that. Yeah, I mean, at first, very strongly philosophically believe that no single three-hour test on a Saturday morning is going to measure any student's full potential. 
or town. And not only do I philosophically believe that, but the reality is the research has demonstrated that mm-hmm. that's true. That what right. this test has proved is that you have money, that your parents are privileged and they can sign you up for test prep courses that are very expensive. Test prep courses that teach you how to game the test, not like you're actually learning more information or knowledge. That's right. And we know the literature has demonstrated that the SAT and ACT have really been tools to exclude talented, low-income, first-generation, Latinx, Black, Native American students from going to college. I think it's just really horrific how much power and influence we've allowed the College Board and ACT to have in determining what and who, you know, how you get into college and who gets into college. It's interesting. I did an interview with Akil Bello not too long ago, and he reminded me that uh, he started out as a test prep consultant. Families would pay him a lot of money to yeah. teach their, their kids or friends, family members, how to game the test. So that's what got him started down this journey. It's just the inherent absurdity of people making lots of money to help people, students understand how to get through the tests and score as high as they can, regardless of whether or not they understand the content. Exactly. And I'm sure you talked to him about just the origins of this test, right. you know, and the reality that this test was developed, you know, by the college board and the SAT at the time to figure out how to ensure that Jews would not be admitted to elite universities. So yeah. it comes from very basic racist and its perspective of its founders. And in spite of, I think, a, a lot of money spent on PR, the research proves those racist effects are still very effective. So let's talk about some of the research. And I know in your own work and the campaign's work, particularly when you were testifying or showing up to meetings of the University of California or the Cal State system, you talked about some of these impacts that you've seen in your research, particularly impacts that disproportionately affect low-income students and students of color here in California. Can you talk a little bit more about what you have found in your research? Yeah. So, you know, the the data just demonstrates that T scores are really highly correlated with your family's income and parentification. And that if you look across race and ethnicity, there are still effects, even if you're a higher income Black or Latinx student, the, the impact by race is still pretty significant. So that's obviously incredibly concerning. We know that universities, they're, they're in the process of figuring out what their admission pool is, right? Right. And so they're doing right. a ration admission. And I think the case that we're making is don't use a tool that is consistently been proven to have these effects that are anti-low income, anti-Black, anti-Latinx in order to do something that you have to do, which is, hey, if you have 100 spots, you've got to determine who those 100 students are, right? That's right. And, you know, ju- we just made the case. This is a, a lazy rationing tool. Mm-hmm that in making millions of dollars for the college board and the testing industry as a whole. And so what is exciting about the UC and the CSU dropping these standardized tests is really how can they be more thoughtful about holistic review of college applications, which we know takes more time, but is the right thing to do versus using, again, what I would say is like, oh, uh, an easy, lazy tool that has incredible problems associated with it. That's certainly the conversations that came up at the University of California when I had the, the privilege of, of being on the board. I think lots of people recognize, particularly in a university like, like the UC, that there is huge demand. I mean, you think about the number of applications that UCLA receives at San Diego, Irvine. Irvine just broke its record again. UCLA continues to break records every year for the number of applications. So there's tremendous demand 
for seats in universities like the University of California. And unfortunately, because of the way that we fund our colleges and universities, we have restricted capacity. And so instead of using the test, I mean, e even if you step back and think about and say, okay, there was a good intention there somewhere. We're no longer using the test for any, any good intention. We're using it, as you said, to figure out an, an easier way to say no to some people and say, okay, yes to others, regardless of whether or not they have shown the kind of, of tenacity over four years of going to class every day in high school and maybe not scoring well on the test, but the test gives, gives us an easy out, unfortunately. I, I was just going to say it does give an easy out and, and that should be unacceptable, right? It, it shouldn't be easy to, to ration. I mean, we should be more thoughtful about the talent required. And I think the other thing that is just interesting to me, and Eloy, you probably experienced this, but, you know, when I think about how I had a 3.5 GPA in the, in the 90s, that was mm -hmm. more than enough. You went to most UC. I got into UC San Diego. I got into every college I applied to. Right. And today you don't even just need straight A's across your four years of high school. You need all of these advanced placement courses also run by the college board. Right. We, we've sort of accepted the reality of like, oh, well, it, there's more competition. So we're just going to make it harder for students to get in. Instead of saying, you know, that 3.5 student would benefit immensely also from a UC education and might actually go on and do good things in the world. That's right. It's just amazing to think that the college board will get you one way or the other. It'll get you when you have to take the SAT and then it'll convince you that you also have to take AP courses. So that's a pretty good revenue model. Exactly. So, and that's why... They have three CEOs that make their president makes more than two and a half million. Right. Two CEOs below him make over a million. And I think I counted 15 of their executives make over $300,000 a year. Yeah. And, that's, and that's a nonprofit organization. So given the huge demand that we just talked about for California public universities, do you believe that removing the admission test will negatively impact an institution's ability to admit a college-ready and diverse student body? No, I think it's going to allow a college and university to be hopefully better about what their admissions are, to have a much more competitive pool of students. After the UC dropped the SAT as a requirement, you know, early data reports showed that applications to the UC increased substantially. That's right. So really the test was a gatekeeper from even applying. Imagine right. how many talented students said, you know what, I, I, how many smart, amazing students have you met, Eloy, that are like, I just am not a good test taker. Or That's I right. don't have thousand dollars to take prep classes that are going to show me how to game a test, but they've got good grades and they work hard. So I, I'm not concerned. I think we have a lot of talent. Over half of California high school students are completing A through G courses. Those are the courses required for university admission. I think we're, we're going to see, right, a, a more diverse and broader number of students, many of whom would not have even applied now that they don't have to take an SAT or an ACT and submit those scores. When I was president of Long Beach City College, we ran into this all the time. We had fairly low transfer numbers to the University of California. We had high transfer numbers to Cal State because it was at Cal State Long Beach next door, or Cal State Dominguez Hills, so the freeway. But for some reason, students just felt that there was no point even thinking about the University of California because one, they didn't do well in the SAT in high school. So immediately they're conditioned to think that the UC is out of reach, even though you don't need a test score to transfer. But that was in their DNA. I wasn't surprised when I saw the number of applications significantly go up because we've just removed one 
mental barrier for a lot of students. And I, I get that that creates even greater demand on the enrollment offices of the UC, and, and I empathize with that. But it just tells you how many people saw that as a barrier, and once that was lifted, felt that it might be time to apply to the University of California. And it's a good problem to have, to That's have right. more applicants. We know that college graduate, the number of college graduates and our extensive access to higher education is what has made us such a strong economy. There's a huge benefit, not just individually. I talked about my own personal story. When I graduated from college, the, that first year I was doing my income taxes and was doing my parents' income taxes. And in that one year, I made more than my parents' combined income. Oh. I was working for a nonprofit, Eloy, so I wasn't <laughs> making any. <laughs> but it, it just goes You, you weren't working sh- for the college board, were you? I was definitely not working for the college board. When I say it was about 36000 a year that I was earning after I graduated, and that was more than my parents' combined income. So it, it tells you the huge leap. So personally... But then also, you know, the research demonstrates a huge ROI for the state of California. For every dollar it spent in sending a Californian to college, it gets at least three dollars back. In some studies, it's four fifty if right. they complete college. And so that means that's a lot. That's less money spent on social services. College graduates have lower incarceration rates. They have health care. They are homeowners. They're more civically involved. They're voters. So all of those things benefit all of us as a community. And so we do want to keep pressure on the state to fund enrollment. And that has been a priority for us at the Campaign for College Opportunity. We are grateful that the governor of California has invested in additional enrollment growth. And we know it's not enough. We've got to do a lot more. And sometimes some of these campuses don't really want to grow a lot more either, right? So we've got to push them. That's right. Because we know. I mean, how many folks can live off of uh, just a high school diploma today? Living wage is, is tough. And even though there are definite concerns, rightfully, about the cost of college and student debt, the reality is college continues to pay off. The Public Policy Institute of California just wrote a piece yesterday, is college worth it? And right. all you have to do is look at the unemployment rates for college graduates, the salary differential between college graduates and those that don't have a college degree. And the answer is a resounding yes. It, uh, it continues to be one of the greatest levers for economic mobility. So <clears throat> let me ask you uh, one final question as we begin to wrap up. So now that the SAT is out of the picture at the University of California and the California State University system, and with your advocacy, we were able to end the use of placement exams in community colleges. So we've done a lot in California to move away from high stakes standardized testing. So what's next on the advocacy agenda for the campaign? Well, first and foremost is is making sure that we have the kind of state budget investments to expand enrollment and support professional development at our colleges and universities that is necessary. Mm -hmm. And two that we are actually implementing these reforms well. Eloy, you know firsthand, right, that passing legislation or having a budget allocation is is not even half. (laughs) Right. (laughs) That what we really need to do is make sure that campus by campus, these placement tests are dropped, that students do have access to college-level English, and that we are closing the gaps that continue to persist for Black and Latinx students. So we are focused on in continuing to advance strengthening efforts for transfer reform. As you know, we've pushed really hard to ensure that there's a clearer pathway for students and making sure that there's a common general education path that gets students to either the UC or the CSU. And so we're excited about those opportunities, but really continuing to to monitor and advocate for strong implementation. It would be unfortunate to have certain students that go to particular community colleges or universities to have a clear path. And then those students that live in certain zip codes to be left out because their campus is doing everything that they can. So we're going to continue to champion and push on that and continue to advocate that 
this governor continues to support both funding and these major reforms for our colleges and universities. Well, that's great to hear. And I appreciate the, the nod to the challenges of implementation. Most of my gray hairs aren't from passing legislation. They're from implementing legislation. So that that's is right. a tough part. Well, listen, Michelle, I really appreciate the work that you and the campaign are leading. And I really appreciate you taking time and joining me here on the rant. Thank you, Eloy. It's always so good to be in your company. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for joining us. This was a great conversation with Michelle Skeros from the Campaign for College Opportunity. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the like button and leave me your comments. And to hear more episodes, subscribe to this channel and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. Take care, and we'll see you next time on The Rent.